Come on, give me the intro, man. Start. Forget about your intro. Just fuck the intros. Mm. Fuck everything. Surviving the digital jungle is tough. We're here to guide you through it on the Digital Jungle Podcast. All right. Janti. Howdy. Thanks for taking the time for another one of these podcasts. Thank you for having me. So today I wanted to, so we, we, uh, our last podcast, um, we had some really great feedback. Um, we had a, a fair few users um, and followers uh, send through some feedback on some topics yeah, that they'd love awesome. to. Yeah, it was really good. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks to all. Um, today, what we wanted to talk about um, is going to be really, I wanted to get your take and, and, and the reason why I wanted to get your take on this topic is because you know, you've been in this industry, in this digital marketing industry, and you've managed. Years. Yeah, 15 years. Um, Same as you. That's exactly right. And um, you've managed so many businesses, account managed so many businesses. And and the way your, your style of uh, uh, managing accounts um, is quite intimate. Absolutely. Would I be correct in saying that? Absolutely. So you get really stuck into the way they operate, the moves that they take, the decisions that they make. Correct. Um, and throughout the 15 years of experience, you, you've had direct insight on how businesses operate, what makes them succeed and what makes them fail. Yeah, I've been very lucky like that where I've been able to see, you know, the ones that go up and the ones that go down. Awesome. So if we can, what, what, what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk and I wanted to see what your opinion is or what have you found throughout the years of experience you've had, what is the number one reason why a business fails? Uh, guidance. I mean, there are many reasons why, but if we're going to talk about the number one overarching kind of reason that ties into attitude, um, discipline, it all comes down to, I think, guidance. So with guidance, so it, so that that obviously applies, like I said, like with your experience, that applies from startup yeah. to early days of business. Yeah to a ten mature years, business? Even 10 years later, 15 years later. Okay, awesome. So what? why is guidance that reason, that number one reason for the failure when you see a business go downhill? Yeah, well, so there is such thing called poor guidance. Yep. Right, so, you know, it's very easy to receive poor guidance, you know. That can be whether or not you're starting off from fresh and you have an idea and you voice it to a mate or your parents you know, or your brother or your sister or anyone really that you know that you want any of that validation from. Then there's midway through, a couple of years into your business, you know, you're trying to go through numbers, you're trying to understand if, you, if you're if you growing, if you're not growing, if you have a scalable product or model or a scalable business or not, um, and you receive bad guidance, you know, bad guidance can break you at that stage. You know, sometimes I've seen many businesses uh, break on the back of trying to expand interstate. Okay, that's you interesting. Know? See, because like if you go to your accountant to get guidance on reach, you're going to the wrong person. You know, if you go to your mate who's never ran a business or never ran it or ha he has a very successful business at what he does, but it's totally different to the way you've set up your business and your, your how you get your customers or how your you service your customers or your reviews could be four stars and his reviews could be five stars. You just don't know. There are too many variations. You go to that person, you get the wrong guidance because they're going to tell you what they did that worked for them, right? But like those foundations of bad guidance, they can haunt you at any stage in your business, you know? So you've got to listen well. Listen well, and don't be afraid to go to more people and get more opinions. Well, that was that leads me to a question I wanted to ask you. So, so guidance. So, if you were to give someone advice, and it's one of two choices. Yeah. Choice one is speak to as many people as you can about your business and how it's performing and how you're going, and 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 welcome in their opinions and their ideas and and always be vocal mm. um, or keep it close to your chest and only leave it for a select few. Which one would you choose to advise? To, in today? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the first one. You talk to as many people as possible and you gauge 
um, you gauge your feel. Okay. You if, if, if you want to talk to as many But that means you can't be sensitive. You okay. have to have a thick skin because okay. you're talking to people. So when you talk to people, you're not going to get poultry in return all the time. Mm -hmm. you know? You're not going to get the answers that you want. Otherwise, everyone would be successful. You mm -hmm. have to have your intuition. You have to have your belief system, what you believe in. Because if you don't believe in anything, you'll never back yourself, right? You know, mm. and you have to have intention. Okay, so let me quickly go back to what you said before. So speaking to a lot of people and vocalizing how you're going and getting other people's opinion. Yeah. How do you protect yourself from getting the wrong advice or implementing the wrong advice? How do you protect that? How do you vet? So I'm speaking to 12 people. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Each person has a different way of doing things. They're all giving me different opinions. Mm. How do I vet the ones that aren't really, or the, 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 the opinion that might take me down the wrong track? But you have to learn, you have to know how to listen. Okay. Without listening, you know, like, <clears throat> you know, there's a saying, ignorance is bliss, right? In this situation, being ignorant is not bliss. Do you get me? Okay. You have to know how to listen. That's really all it is. Listen, but doesn't, so basic, so is what no, you're saying. Listening doesn't mean act. Okay, cool. You have to listen. Okay. You know, there's someone in front of you, there's someone talking, you know, listen to what they're saying and just walk away with one good thing from it. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be the dumbest thing. It could be about a color. Do you know what I mean? Like, for example, I learned one very big lesson, actually about five, uh, two years back, right? As an expert in my field with very good, uh, I would say I have very good uh, instincts in my field. Um, I have uh, a lot of experience and a lot of wisdom, right? You know, I went into our boardroom to discuss a rebrand, right? I was wrong because the rebrand was for a female, from a female point of view. They had a better instinct, like the, the, you know, in the, in the boardroom, the marketing team had a better instinct than me. Do you get me? So, but that didn't stop me from listening, from listening and realizing that there was something, there was a better piece of information that I needed for my end deal coming from someone else's mouth. Do you understand? Mm, so be open-minded. Be open-minded. If I was to listen to what you've just said, yeah. My natural thing would be, oh, I need to go look for a business coach. No, absolutely not. Or I need to go <laughs> sit down with my accountant. <clears throat> or I, I need to sit down with these, these so-called experts that can teach me business. Yeah. Is, is, is that what you're saying? No, no, like, so, no it's not what I'm saying. So what I'm trying to say is if you actually have to go to a business coach or you have to go and consult on whether or not you have the right concept or product or form of diversity in place, stay where you are. Mm -hmm. Stay where you are. Because the one thing that you need to succeed is grit. Mm -hmm. No one can give that to you. You have to have it. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to seek for seek grit, stay where you are. You, you live a happier life where you are. Mm -hmm. And otherwise you will enter that terrible chain of trying to incubate and grow a business that can't grow because you are in the way. Mm. That's got wow. nothing to do with skill set. Okay. It's got to do with your grit. Okay. No business starts with much. Every you know, business you, starts with nothing. You know, you've got a very interesting take on it. And, and to be honest with you, because you've, what you've done is you've, you've, you've painted this picture of, you know, the duality of what opinions can do to your business. Like yes. it can, you know, the right opinions can make you thrive because if you listen well, you do so well. Um, if you listen and implement the right things, you do so well. And you're never too smart. You never know everything. Never. Like, like the example you said. But then the duality of it is the other side of it is it is such a slippery s slope when if you get the wrong advice, you can go down the very opposite track and go downhill. Do so you, you remember... Do you remember at the, there was a time many years ago, say 2012, right? Where there were a lot of businesses that had more money allocated to print than online. Yes. 
the reason why they refused to invest more in line uh, or online was because the rate of return from online wasn't as great or it wasn't greater than print. It was that simple, silly mind of, you know, $1 here should equal $2 there and $1 here should equal $2 there. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. And I think it was yourself that came out and basically said back then, you need all of it. That's right. Do you get me? So like you can't go to a business coach and hear that. You don't go to a marketing agency and hear that. Do you understand? Yeah. Like that comes from your experience, your your personal character. It comes from your own grit. It comes from your lessons in life, the ability for you to learn, the ability for you to take in a lesson. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Yep. Who's going to go and sell what? You can't just go to, to a, oh, hi there, can I buy one potential business owner package? You know what I mean? It doesn't exist, right? And I'll tell you what, you know what the scary thing is? In 2021, if you have an, an inch of that in you, you're not surviving. You're not. Hmm. And there's going to be a lot more people back in the job market from it. All right. Inter- interesting take, Janti. I like it. Um, your, your perspective is It's unique. very short, but we're limited no, by yeah, time, you know? Absolutely. But I like your take on it because it's very unique. Um, and in my opinion, it's a lot more valid, like I said, because you've had these intimate relationships with so many businesses. So you, you've seen it firsthand. My, my take on this is going to be something you hear everywhere online. You hear it so many in so many places. But mm. my take on it hopefully can give you a little bit of a different perspective on it. Um, throughout the years that I've been managing accounts, I've seen – uh, one particular reason be leaps uh, leaps and bounds ahead of the other reasons why a business can can fail. That number one reason is failing to adapt. Okay, and that that word, like I said, that 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 sentence, um, you've probably heard it online a hundred times over. But I've physically seen it in the last fifteen years, and it's so interesting to say it because failing to adapt can mean. So many different layers to uh, <coughs> running a business. Yeah. Now, this this current climate of uh, operating a business is so fast paced. Yes. Right. Um, you know, I would say if you go back fifteen years ago, you know, or earlier, you know, you had a leeway of five years before you had to or forced to adapt. Yeah. You had like you had ample enough opportunity mm. to take. To, to take a leap, you your know fitness, what I mean? Your fitness didn't matter. No, it didn't. And 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 your speed to market or speed to change yeah. wasn't really important. But now, these days, if you... As but a it's business, a lot easier to set up a business now. But that's separate to the reasons for failure. Yeah. The reason for failure is right now that window of, uh, of, of time that you have that you need to quickly adapt to a, a, a change of market that small window can make or break you. Yeah. And and I've seen time and time again business owners not actually fully comprehend and understand how important it is to stay open-minded with the market and the way yeah. the market's changing. So, failure to adapt, think of this the some of the some of the topics, yeah, on a marketing level. Very easy. Yep. 10 years ago, what was it? Yellow pages. As marketing experts, our job is to find where the eyeballs are looking. Where is the most of the eyeballs looking right now? At that stage, it was Yellow Pages book. That's it was right. a lot of offline. Yeah, phones, uh, iPhones, the 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 internet speed, all of that played a, a, a factor on the transition to digital. But if you didn't move, how many businesses did we see? Because we've also been in the directory game. In the directory game, uh, prior to being in. In the in the in the digital marketing world, right? How many businesses actually shut down because of their failure to adapt to digital? Many, 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 many. many. Like, I can recall m- most of them. It was like it was it was but frightening. You, but it was you. frightening, but it was exciting for a young person because at the time I was super young. It was so it was super exciting to see this new world. But that's number one: failing to adapt can kill a business, the transition from offline to online. Now, we're in a new phase. Online is starting to get is starting to spread thin. 
more and more channels are starting to open up. Now, if, if, if you're a business owner right now and you're thinking TikTok, TikTok is pointless, that's the wrong mindset. But you know what else is the wrong mindset? I need a TikTok account. That's also the wrong mindset. Why? It was like, it's like back in the day when everybody said, oh, everybody, everything, everyone needs social media. So let's just go get Facebook, right? And then you wake up in the morning and you see on fucking Monday morning, somebody says, it's Monday, have coffee. Wait, wait. Keep no, calm, no. it's Friday. No, no, but, but you're, what you're saying is um, uh, think it out or think it through. Like, like, no, what like, I'm saying go is with a purpose. be careful that you don't fall in the trap of thinking that the platform is the solution. I agree. No, no, I agree. I agree. Because like, I know we keep talking about, you know, some of the main reasons and, you know, like just to bring some of our viewers that are of a younger generation, right. Who may not have, may not have context to behind what we're talking about. You know, anyone our age and older is going to understand it. Yeah. But the younger people, they might not because they didn't grow up in it. They might not even know what a digital directory is. You know, I have nieces and nephews. I think a lot of them wouldn't even know that. Um, but let's talk about things like the recipe for marketing. Has that changed? No. Exactly. But why do people second. forget? No, no. Okay. Because it's not. It's absolutely KFC's not. KFC's recipe. It's not forget. It's, I don't believe it's forgetful. I don't think, I think, it, like I said. People get lost in it. No, you know how many, no, you know how many no, customers? I, I, no. I, I, but you know how many times I'm profiling a customer and I see the same boring shit? No, but that's different. And I think well, no wonder talking, why you're complaining. But I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying common reasons for like yeah, the well, mentality. Maybe we should talk about it. No, no, we probably will. But maybe we the should. reason for failure, what I'm trying to say is I'm giving you an insight of the mentality of not wanting to adapt to change. The mentality of shutting down TikTok, that's not for my generation. Yeah. Well, that generation that's using TikTok, I'm not saying I'm a TikTok expert. I don't, I, I don't, I don't completely understand it, but I want to learn it. What I'm trying to say is that generation that's using TikTok within five to 10 years, and if you think your business is going to last five to 10 years and you haven't tried to cover that market, you will die. Now, all I'm saying is, Businesses right now, the common reason, and right now it's so important because COVID brought it, accelerated it. Yeah. Because the world was hit with this pandemic. Hit. Businesses that adapted quick, I'm not going to say all of them sailed through. A lot of people did really tough. But businesses that adapted very quickly, sort of the, the impact of COVID was lower. The ones that had, the ones that had that mentality that, that they could not adapt to this market or did, were were a resistant mentality, all of them were the casualties. Yes. Now, we're talking. That's on a marketing level. Like I said, then you go on failure to adapt on a product level, right? The consumer is now consuming things differently. Yeah. Right. They used to eat a cheeseburger with a drink. Right. Now people might be eating a cheeseburger with a drink and a soft serve. I'm just giving you an example. Like the way consumers are uh, consuming a product or a service is different now than what it was three months ago. So I'll give an example uh, of what a customer would ask me. Man, I'm not closing my quotes. I'm not, customers are not proceeding with the quotes that we're putting out. Right? Too my expensive. first expensive. Well, well, before I even get into that, my first thing is that I ask is what are you doing to improve? Are you just quoting the same way? And if so, why? Why are you not trying to implement different ways of trying to pitch a deal or close a deal? So the emergence of offering finance. Like I ask a client of mine, do you offer finance? And they'll say, well, no. That's a... That's a failure to adapt. Yeah. Three years ago, you, you, you couldn't even ask that question and be looked at as smart or intelligent. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, but, but that's, you but don't that's, even know my business. Why would you ask that? So, so that's, that's, like, like that's a typical example of how if you don't evolve your product or the way you pitch, yeah. you, can, you can die, right? Yeah. The way people consuming, the way people are spending money is different. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Where, where, where people find more value, like, some people find value in investing in their home. Some people don't. Like, it's 
everything's changing at such a rapid rate. Yeah, and it, but, it, but, but the main on. thing is it's easier now. You know, we should never forget how much easier it is. I understand because you have you know? so much resources, but... Ten years ago, you couldn't dream of having a job management system. Now there's one that's off the rack. So that, $100 that, a, that, a month. That leads me to my next point. You know? That, but that leads, like, so failure to adapt, yeah? Yeah. Businesses that are using Excel yeah. or not even using Excel, they're using diaries. Yes. Physical pen Physical diaries. Physical pen and paper. You know what I mean? There and it worked. I'm not, I'm not, I don't deny it, it worked. I totally understand. Yeah, and there's still successful businesses right yeah. now that probably still do that. But, I, but if they don't adapt and they don't get onto new efficient platforms. On every level. On every level. How many businesses do you know that have struggled or lost half their trade or half their Customers because they just refuse to take FPOS. Absolutely. Heaps. The ones that never have accepted FPOS don't really know what they're missing out on. But anyway, let me bring yeah. it back. So like I said, on a business process level, failure to adapt, it's costing you money if you're, mm. if you're not adapting. Mm. So in general, the next generation is only five years away where they start to earn proper income and start to make buying decisions. Now, if you're not prepared for that market, good luck. That's what I've seen, and I've seen it on so many levels, the way a business quotes, the way their business process works, the way staff and internal culture of how to manage staff has changed. Mobility has changed. So if, you know, five years ago, Janti, were reviews important? Online reviews? Yeah, five years ago. I thought not. No, I would say no. Were, could you pin the success or failure on your reviews five years ago? No, I would have pinned it on your phone mannerism. Okay. Now, now it's no longer important. No, no, now. You can have an operator can answer. Can a business fail if they have bad reviews? Yes. Okay. But look at how the market's changed. Agreed. Every business owner that's probably listening to this or a user that's put a bad review for a, for a business that deserved a bad review, think about this. Your opinion matters now. Yeah. Everyone opin everyone's opinion matters now. Yeah. Now, as a business owner, if you want to be resistant, resist. It's costing you money. It's going to cost you your livelihood. That's, that's, it's that's going to cost 100%. you your livelihood. And the more you sit there and you, you become disappointed at, you know, people expressing their opinion, like, I've had bad reviews, but you know what? I learned a lot from them too. Customers will still use you if you have a bad review. It's the, it's, it's the number of good reviews that either come out of it, that come after it. You know, you either show your users that you learn reviews. or you get better at what you do or you show them that one review was real because every other review after it was bad too. Reviews is a topic on its, on its own. It can stand on its own yeah. two feet. And I'll tell you what. Because you know what else I, is I a topic my, on my, its my, own? I'll tell you with reviews. You know what? We're going to do it. You know, we're going to do one on reviews. But you know. I think, think people need to know the truth. I'm going to tell you one quick thing about reviews. You can be, you can have, a, an, as a business owner, you can have a, a poor uh, perception on it or you can have a positive perception on it. Reviews, as ugly as it may seem on a business owner level, people are holding you more accountable mm. for what you're doing in the market. Yeah. Right? And, now, it's, to, and it's to understand that it's not, well, okay, the sensitivity part again, like one bad review. So you've got one bad review. Somebody's fucked up along the chain and it's made you get a one, you know, one bad review. How can you spend your whole day panicking and worrying about that one bad review without thinking of how to get the next five good ones? Absolutely. Um, and look, uh, a lot of energy is being spent right now on resisting reviews. Yeah. But I think it needs to change. So um, that, this is like an evolving a, conversation and this is something that we have to do separately. Yeah, I agree. Next week. I agree. And look, um, just to wrap up what I'm trying to say is failing to adapt. Okay. Okay. And the characteristic, the individual person, they are the resistant person. They are the person that says, I'm a creature of habit. It's hard for me to change. Change is hard. Mm. Adapting is hard. But really... Business is hard, so you have no other choice. That's correct. So 
in summary, hopefully, hopefully this has resonated out in the market. Um, um, if you have any topics that you'd like us to discuss, please leave a comment um, and share your feedback if you want. Um, but thank you very much, Janti. Thank you, Kenan. Um, our next topic is going to be a juicy one. It's going to be a, a juicy one. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a juicy one. <laughs>